When you first start SketchUp, you'll be presented with the welcome screen. Regardless if you are using SketchUp Free or Pro, you will need to pick a template to start with. The main difference is the default units of measurement SketchUp will use, such as meters or inches. The other difference is the starting view, which can be from the side or from the top. Either is fine. Choose a template and start SketchUp. Based on the template you've chosen for SketchUp, your default view will be from the top or from the side. Let's all start from the same view by going to the camera menu, Standard Views, and choose ISO. Now begin by drawing a rectangle. Pick the Rectangle tool, then click once to start a rectangle. Pull away, and click again to finish. A quick note about drawing in SketchUp. Get in the habit of click and releasing your mouse button to start and finish most actions. This will be true for almost all of the drawing tools. Unless we specifically ask you to click and drag your mouse button, always click and release to start and finish each tool and action. Now undo any rectangles by going to the edit menu and choosing undo. Draw another rectangle, but this time keep an eye on the lower right corner as you do. Click once to start the rectangle, pull away, and watch how the dimensions change as you adjust the rectangle size. Click again to finish the rectangle. You can be as precise with SketchUp as you'd like. Although it may not seem you are being accurate, everything you draw in SketchUp has a real-world scale. We'll learn more about this later. For now, let's move on to the next tool, the Push-Pull tool. Select this tool and click on the rectangle we just drew, pull up, and we've created a box. Click to finish. The Push-Pull tool will literally push or pull on any flat surface. Try it on our simple box. Click on this side to pull it out and click to finish. Click on this side to push it in and click to finish. Now let's combine more rectangles with the Push-Pull tool. Select the Rectangle tool and draw a rectangle on our existing box. Watch how SketchUp will give you reference points to help as you draw. For example, to draw from this corner, SketchUp snaps to this point and shows you a green endpoint. Click here to start, pull away, and finish the rectangle. Now use Push-Pull to push this new surface inward. The drawing tools all work based on the surface you are drawing on. For example, use the Circle tool to draw a circle on one of your surfaces. Simply click to start, pull out the radius, and click again to finish. Now draw another circle on a different surface to see how the orientation aligns to whatever you are drawing on. Use Push-Pull to create some cylinders. Select the Rectangle tool again and start from this upper edge. SketchUp shows a red dot indicating you are on the edge. Click to start and draw down to a lower edge, also showing a red dot. Use Push-Pull to push this surface inward. All reference points are called inference points in SketchUp, and they will be very helpful in making you both accurate and fast. Here are the basic inference points. End points, on edge points, and midpoints for the middle of any edge. There are others, but these are the most common. You can see how simple it is to create 3D objects in SketchUp. Let's take a moment to explore navigation in SketchUp. Start with the Orbit tool. Click and drag to orbit your view right to left and up and down. For practice, try orbiting fully around your model. Next is the Pan tool. This moves your view side to side without orbiting. Click and drag to pan your view of the model around the screen. The final navigation tool is Zoom. Click and drag to zoom closer to and away from your model. Now try practicing using Orbit, Pan, and Zoom together. Zoom in, Orbit, Pan, Orbit, Zoom, and so forth. Navigating is essential in SketchUp, but going back and forth to pick the icons seems slow and cumbersome, which is why we've built all the navigation tools into a three-button scroll wheel mouse. Simply roll the mouse wheel forward and back to zoom in and out. Press the wheel down to orbit. Press the wheel down and hold Shift key on your keyboard to pan. 
Practice navigating again using the scroll wheel for a much faster experience. Another advantage to using the scroll wheel is better control over zooming. Try this. Hover your cursor over this corner of your model and roll the wheel forward. See how it zooms towards that corner? Using the scroll wheel will zoom toward and away from any area where your cursor is, making navigation even easier. Let's review what we've learned so far by creating a very simple house object. Begin by zooming back out so we can see our entire model, then use the Select tool. Click and drag a selection box around the entire model and press Delete on your keyboard. Draw a new rectangle and use the Push-Pull tool to pull this rectangle into a box. Orbit and Pan to get a better view of the top. Now let's split this top surface with the Line tool. Before drawing the line, hover over the top edge and find the midpoint inference. Click on the midpoint to start drawing, move across the surface and find the midpoint on the opposite edge and click to finish the line. We'll pull this new edge up to create a roof. Choose the Select tool and click on the edge to select it. With the edge highlighted, use the Move tool to create a ridge. Click on the edge to begin moving it, move it upward, and click again to finish. A quick orbit shows that I wasn't very careful in moving my roof line and the result is uneven. Let's undo that move and see how SketchUp can help us to be more accurate. Make sure the edge is selected, then using the Move tool, click once on the edge to start moving it. While moving it around, notice that the edge snaps to a blue dotted line. This is an indication that you are moving the edge straight up, which will result in an even roof. Click to finish. In SketchUp, the red, green, and blue axes will help you to draw and move correctly in 3D space. Let's try it by creating a chimney on the roof. Navigate for a better view of the roof surface. Now use the Line tool and click once on an upper part of the roof to start drawing a line. As you move the line around, watch how it will snap to a red direction, a green direction, and a blue direction. Try drawing a line in each direction, orbiting to see the orientation. The blue direction is vertical, straight up and down, and the red and green are horizontal. To draw a chimney, we could approach it in many ways, but we'll use this method. We'll draw the side profile shape, then use the push-pull to create the full chimney. Drawing with the axis directions will help us create the correct profile in 3D space. Use the eraser tool and click on any edges you drew to erase them. With the line tool, click once on the roof edge. Make sure you see the red on-edge inference point, or you could also start from the midpoint and draw a line straight up in the blue direction. Click to finish your line and press the Escape key to cancel a continuous line. Now choose another point on the edge and start drawing a line from that point up in the blue direction and watch as you draw upward that SketchUp will give you an inference when you are lined up with the previous line you drew. Draw your second line to this point. Now draw an edge connecting the two lines to complete a surface. With the surface drawn, use Push-Pull to extend the chimney across the roof to a point you are happy with. Use push-pull again to complete the chimney. By pulling across the roof surface, extra edges have been created, but these are easily erased. Any lines drawn across coplanar surfaces can be erased to form one larger surface. We call this healing the surface. Use the eraser and erase the two extra edges. At this point you know some of the basics of SketchUp, so practice what you've learned by adding to our simple house. Draw a rectangle and split it in half. Then use push-pull to create some steps. Draw a few more rectangles to create a door and windows. Try a few things on your own. You can see how easy it is to create simple models in SketchUp with only a few tools. When you are ready to learn more, proceed to our next video where we will create a more detailed house with real dimensions and introduce you to the offset and follow me tools.